What you're looking at is a bag made of beads resembling, yes, you're looking at it correctly, a Coles roast chicken. You can see it here sitting alongside the real thing. And joining us now is the artist behind the bag, uh, Emma Buswell, speaking to us from Perth. Thank you very much for your time, Emma. Congratulations Hi. on taking out the Jundalup in 2022 Invitation Art Prize with this bag, the roast took in a bag, uh, nicknamed uh, on your Instagram and also by our producer Jacob as the Bachelor's Bag. Uh, can you give us the backstory? Uh, sure. So I had an idea for this work when I was working on a solo show coming up um, and the Ginger Lap entry had come around and I thought it might be a good opportunity to enter this work into the prize. Um, so I did and it won. So you titled um, this bag the Sometimes Luxury Handbag and Other sub Suburban Fables. Talk us through some of those stories that inspired the bag. Yeah, sure. So uh, growing up, the luxury bag was kind of a bit of a novelty treat in our family. So it kind of did kind of develop that cult status uh, personally as a, as a luxury item. So I wanted to imbue that, that image with the luxury of time spent making it. Um, so I spent over 100 hours beating it. Uh, in turning it into a bag um, that you can use. Um, I like yeah. some of the comments on your Instagram. I've never needed a bag more in my life. Winner, winner, chicken <laughs> dinner. Uh, now, Emma, statement textile art has become something of your signature style. Your previous mm -hmm. knits include the star uh, democracy sausage and also uh, one jumper that went viral and sold out very quickly with the words, there's nothing unlawful about going for a run and having a kebab. Uh, talk us through some of those creations and uh, how you would describe your body of work. Sure, sorry. <laughs> I've got hay fever at the moment, so it's real bad. Um, uh, it's, I'm really interested in, in politics and place and how those two things intersect. So I use textiles uh, as a way of commenting and creating objects that people can imagine wearing. Because um, I think the context of work sitting outside of a gallery space is really important. Um, and so that people in the everyday can kind of have a sense and feel like they're a part of something as well. Um, so in 2020, I started making a lot more of these works um, with the like idea of kind of focusing more and more on my own practice, more and more on my own political agenda um, and representing like people who feel, dream, live like me um, and who kind of feel a little bit left behind, I guess, by um, a generation of people who priced us out of real estate and other markets. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess just kind of trying to find my own voice through, through making work in practice. And like a lot of great that art, this was really born out of struggle for you. During the pandemic, you lost your job. And in a sense, that, that, uh, that brought about this shift, this redirect in your life. <coughs> and you've started making this full time. Yeah, um, not full time. No, I, d I have a day job. So I work four days a week uh, for a local council. Um, so most of the time when I'm making work, it's after nine to five and then coming home and doing this for six or seven hours to get done. Um, I'd like it to be my day job eventually. That's where I'm kind of hoping to head. Um, but at the moment it's, it's been like a really rewarding, um, time for myself to spend on making work. Talk us through some of the practicalities. You said that it takes you some time to regain feeling in your fingers after creating uh, your, your pieces. How do you make these little <coughs> marbles? Sorry, can you say that again? You've said that it takes time to regain feeling in your fingers after, after making uh, your creations. So how, mm -hmm. how does it work? What's the process of, of, of turning out one of the jumpers or the beaded bag, which has taken off now? So the, the jumpers I use on a 1970s domestic knitting machine. Um, so I make them, it's quite a manual process of putting stitches over needles and then they are like a carriage will kind of drag across the machine and tuck those stitches back in. Um, so it's a, a machine that was heavily advertised to women um, in the 60s and 70s and 80s as a way for them to make garments for their family, much like the domestic sewing machine now. Um, and then in the in the beaded bag, that's my first ever beaded work, but it's using a bead loom. So it's a very similar kind of process of counting um, and loading up beads based on colour and then threading them through a loom 
and then going back over with a thread to catch them all. So I feel like every time I try and learn a new thing, I'm trying to find something that's a bit quicker um, and I always seem to fail. So people might be sitting down now with a roast chicken, looking at your mm -hmm. delightful roast chicken bag. What does it mean to you? What is the symbol of the, the great Australian rotisserie chicken mean to you, Emma? <laughs> it has been quite amazing watching through all of the uh, comments on Reddit and as well as some of the other threads that are going on because it seems to be a uniquely Australian um, product in terms of that kind of pre-packed cooked chook that you get at a supermarket. Um, and I really like that this has kind of brought together a lot of people in conversation and uh, that people kind of can have their own relationship to it and, that, and it brings up memories uh, to them of their families and, and time spent. Um, also maybe some hungover occasions. Like I just really like the different narratives that are attached to this kind of object.